Hey traders, Jason here from Levy Brothers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to manage trades when the market tops. It's very similar to how I would manage trades under all circumstances, um, but things get a little bit different when uh, when you start getting you know, breath readings that are start start being weak and uh, you know, a look under the surface reveals that the market is weakening, so we gotta be a little bit tighter with our stops. So anyways, I'm gonna go through a bunch of trades. Um, most of them I did, a couple of them I didn't. I'm gonna show you the daily chart just to give you the bigger picture and then I'm gonna zoom in with an intraday chart and show you the indicators I use and exactly like step-by-step -step, like what I'm looking for uh, as, as the price action unfolds. Okay, let's get to it. All right, here is Plug Power. This is a stock that I traded. You can see it was a, on the left side of the chart, weak stock trending down, getting batted back by its 21 EMA, which is the orange line. It came out of a little bit of a base here, ran up a bunch. You got some volume over here that puts it on, put it on my radar, came back down, tested the 50 here, moved up, and so I was getting involved over here. Okay. First move up, I'm going to miss it because it's a weak stock. It's not even on my radar. That puts it on my radar, and then I start watching it and looking for an entry. And then so I started getting involved over here. I think it was like under 10 bucks. Now what I saw forming was the potential for a, a bigger base. As you can see, we had a little bit of a hump there, big here, and over here. So I started getting involved thinking, hey, we got a, like a, a multi-month base here. The market is acting really well. If this thing can break out, you know, a measured move could take this stock easily up into the mid-teens. That's what I was that's what I was thinking. Okay, so I'm long over here the early July and uh, it moves up as you can see, uh, comes back down and tests the 21, moves up, makes a lower high, comes down and tests the 21 in the previous low, and then as you can see, it breaks down. So let's move, let's go over to the two hour chart and I'll show you how I managed this. Okay, so first thing I do, uh, my, my indicators are the RSI, MACD, Stochastic. You could, uh, you could pause the video and you can see the uh, parameters I have. So first thing I see is we got you know a, a relatively it's not a strong stock, but it's an improving stock uh, that broke out to a new high. Um, we have a trend line break with the RSI here, okay, and okay, and then but the MACD is still in good shape. It doesn't even cross down over here. And when you have a stock, when the market is acting really well and a stock is acting really well and it seems to be in the beginning of stages of a run, you got to give it a little bit of time and space. You can't panic just because it uh, just because it comes down a little bit. So we get a sell signal here. It's noted, but it's not too worrisome yet. But when you fast forward a couple days, stock over here is making a new, uh, a higher high here. The RSI fails to move up and instead flags sideways. The, the MACD, we get a negative divergence here, and then we get a cross down, okay? And then on this last push higher, the MACD fails to cross back up. If you look closely, it looks like the black line is gonna try and get above the red line, but it doesn't. Uh, and the stochastic cycles up and cycles down. So you kind of get early warning sign that we might be selling over, you know, over in this time period, like July 14th-ish, middle of the month. But it wasn't until like a few days later we got the cross down here, the failure to cross back up here, the cross down here. All of that aligns with, you know, that, that sounds the alarm bells. Now, even if you back up and say, hey, it's still a strong stock, it's doing well, I'm going to give it an opportunity. If it comes that you know, like let's say the 21 is a, a really good moving average to, to use, you say like if it goes below the 21, I'm out. And as you can see, it moved down and eventually went below the 21. So to me, that was the exit. Um, and that's how I manage it, okay? So if it's a strong stock doing well, the market's doing well, I'm not going to panic and sell just because it moves down a little bit. But when you get a second set of sell signals so we get we're getting we're getting sell signals over here in this time frame when you get a second set of sell signals within a week of each other that to me is a sell now if it pulls back hits the 21 and goes higher that's just the way it goes okay that that's trading you're never going to nail them perfectly all right here's rocket lab it's another one that i traded i should say we traded at lever brothers we talked about it a lot 
So based for a couple months, broke out as you can see, volume pretty good, comes back down, tests the 21, ramps up again, tests the 21, tests the 21, forms a resistance line here. So we got a you know ascending triangle pattern here with the same highs, higher lows at the 21, then it breaks out and goes crazy. Now, as just as like a side note here, the way I will manage the stock here is going to be different than the way I manage it here. What's the difference between these two? Well, over here, we're closer to the moving averages. So a dip to the moving average is an acceptable pullback within an uptrend. Whereas over here, we're so far from the 21 day, 21 period. This is the daily 21 day moving average. There's no way you can let the stock drop all the way to the 21. It's just too far. Uh, number two is over here, the internals were looking really well. Like everything was looking good. The indexes were doing great. The internals were doing great. Breath was great. Um, we had a huge list of stocks to trade. Everything was acting well. So there's every reason to believe that the market was going to continue up. By the time we got over here, the internals were starting to look weaker. The indexes were still doing fine, but the internals were weakening. Less stocks were participating. So we're starting to get some early warning signs that you know the market is probably in a topping pattern. So over here, you can give stocks time and space to play out because the overall environment was very good. But over here, because the environment has declined, you got to change things up a little bit. You can't give stocks the same leeway. Let's zoom in with the two hour chart again. So here it is, two hour chart Rocket Lab. This is how I manage it. So again, I look at the RSI, we get a trend line break over here. And so we get, it breaks here, MACD crosses down here, which MACD crossing you know, is not a big deal when you get a strong stock in an uptrend. Mathematically, it's gonna cross down, so it's, it's not a reason to panic and sell immediately. You get a little bit of a divergence over here with the stochastic, and then it crosses down. So these are like early warning signs. If the market is not acting well, like these would be sell signals. If the market is acting well, which at the time that these occurred, the market was still doing fairly well. Uh, the market really didn't start to de deteriorate until over here. Um, so these are first warning signs. You could back up and say, I'm gonna give it some time and space. The you know Rocket Lab bounced off the 21 there, it bounced off the 21 there. It's perfectly reasonable to say, hey, I'm gonna let the stock bounce off the 21 there and see if it could prove something nice to, to itself. So then you fast forward a little bit, a couple days, and what happens is, the RSI doesn't, it, it bounces off the center line, but it doesn't go very far. It kind of flags sideways, okay? Then it breaks down over here. The MACD does not curl back up. It just kind of goes up and kisses, and the stochastic crosses. This is my kiss and cross trade I talk about in my master class. The stochastic rotates up and crosses down. The MACD fails to cross back up. Uh, that's my kiss and cross, throw in the RSI breaking down from a flag pattern. Everything looks like this is your second set of sell signals within a week. And you, as you can see here, the stock sliced through the 21 uh, period moving average. That to me is an immediate sell. It's, you know, going into this day, you would be thinking like, hey, I might have to sell if, if this continues to go down. Unfortunately, the next day it gaps down and, and sells off. So you're just like hitting the sell button. Uh, and there it goes, and you can see what happened. It doesn't really matter what happens after that. You, you know, sometimes, sometimes you'll nail them perfectly, sometimes you won't, um, but you gotta be disciplined to stick with your, uh, your signals and just kind of trust them, okay? Um, this was a last chance to sell after earnings. If you held in earnings, then I guess you kind of got lucky um, at least for a few minutes because the selling got pretty intense after the open. All right, let's go to the next one. Here's Tesla. This is the, this is the Tesla ETF, TSLL. Um, this pattern here is part of a, a pretty wide consolidation pattern. The stock had been, you know, had run up a bunch here, was consolidating for a couple months, broke out. As you can see, like huge volume here. Uh, and you can see what happened. It moved up, you know, relatively moved, big move down, moved up, corrected again, moved down. Oh, you can see what happened. So let's zoom in. This is one that I did not trade, uh, but we'll. I'll let's talk through it. You know, and I'll I'll tell you like this is how I would have with this is how I would have managed it if I did trade it. All right. So here is the two hour chart. So first I see we have you know we're crossing down here. Okay, negative divergence here. Okay, so we got you know this takes out a trend line here. This crosses down here. This stochastic had cycled up and gone down here. So the combination of all these things is just, to me, this is like an 
if the market's not acting well, like these are sell signals. But if a mark, if the market's acting well and the stock's acting well, this is just like an early warning sign that we might be selling in the next week or so. But you don't have to panic and sell. As long as the stock's moving up nicely, all the moving averages are trending up nicely, you don't have to sell on the first um, warning sign. Okay, stock comes down, tests the 21, moves back up, continues up. Now, when it goes back up to the high right here, you can see the MACD tried to cross up. It actually did for a day or so, but then immediately crossed back down. The stochastic curled lower and took out a trend line there. And then uh, the RSI, which had like a little bit of a resist not, or not resistance support level there, broke down there. So now we're getting a second set of sell signals pretty much right after the top here. Um, and to me, that is your sell, okay? When you get a set of sell signals here, and then the market mostly, and then the stock recovers and pushes to a new high, but then you get a second set of sell signals like right off the high, that new high is a gift, okay? That, that's your higher high, but it's not being confirmed. So you gotta, so I would be selling right there. Um, as you can see, a stock drop dropped, it gapped up over here, came down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can read it however you want. If you happen to be in over here, like personally, I'd be out over here. I'd be out like over here at whenever it was, June 21st, 22nd, somewhere over there. The fact that it did all this wouldn't matter. Again, you're not going to nail them perfectly. If you happened, if you got back in, then I would be looking at this brain trend line break there, negative, uh, or negative divergence there with a cross there coming out of a topping pattern with a cross there. So the combination of like breaking down here, negative divergence crossing there, rolling over there, that to me is like going into, you know, as the stock is sitting up here, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm getting sell signals or I'm about to get sell signals if the, if the stock is weak the next day. So I might be selling, and then, and and what happens the next day is it gaps down, which absolutely sucks because what you know on, on one night you're thinking, hey, if this thing just opens and slowly moves down, I'm probably going to be selling, uh, and then the stock gaps down and just sells off, and you're like, you just you left some money on the table, but all you can do is just sell and, and move on. All right, let's move on here. This is Apple. Apple started the year at the beginning of January at 125. You can see it moved up over almost over almost to 200. You can see how it, you know, 21, 21, 21, 20, the 21 supported all the way. So you can, first of all, you can have an attitude that as long as it stays above the 21, I'm just going to stay in. Okay. Cause all through here, the market was acting well, index is acting well, lots of stocks breaking out, following through and such internals doing well. When we started to get in here, the internal started to decline and the quality, the quantity of quality trading ideas started to decline. So we're starting to get some warning signs here. So you can still have the attitude that, hey, if the stock stays above the 21, I'm going to stay in. Uh, or you can have the attitude that like, hey, internally the market is weakening. I need to get out. Uh, I'm going to look for an opportunity to get out if, not an opportunity to get out, but I'm going to, I'm going to take a sell signal if I get it. I might ignore a sell signal over here because the market is acting well. Uh, but I'm not going to ignore a sell signal over here because I'm getting warnings from other places. So let's look at the two hour chart. Here we go. All right. So first we have, so Apple breaks here, um, comes out of a top here. Again, these are early signs, but not a big deal. So we cross down here, MACD cross it down, this cross it down. None of these are a big, a big deal. Stock is strong. Market's doing really well. You don't have to panic and, and, and sell just because you get a couple sell signals. As long as, you know, you could definitely have the attitude that I'm going to give it some time and space to, to move around. If, you, if you're a short-term trader, then you take the sell signal. If you're a longer-term swing trader that wants to nail a big move over time, then you can't panic sell just on like, like the first um, sell signal. Okay. Wait for the second one, see what the marking conditions are. So Apple moves down. And then we get some a little bit more serious sell signals. So the RS the RSI flags here and then breaks down. The MACD fails to cross back up and the stochastic rotates back up and then crosses back down. So that to me is a sell signal. Okay, I, like I said, I didn't trade this one, but if I if I was trading it, this would have been my sell signal. Okay, as, as well as the stock was doing, as well as the market was doing, stock had done great. Um, I'll do I'll I'll Note the first sell signal, but I'm not going to panic, but I'm not going to ignore the sell signal, the second sell signal in a week. Okay, we got sell signals from all three indicators, and then the price over here gapped down. So to me, that's a sell. 
and you live to fight another day. Now, in this case, the stock came down, didn't fall that much further, went back up to a new high. That's perfectly fine, um, but that's just that's trading. Okay, if you happen to still be in, we have a couple things to point out here. Um, RSI never got back to overbought level, which is a little bit of a warning. It breaks down here. MACD crosses down, and you can see the distance between the red line and the black line starts to, starts to get bigger. And the stochastic breaks the trend line and rolls over. So we're getting sell signals over here. We're getting sell signals over here before the gap down. Okay, so by this time, beginning of August, we definitely have some weakened internals and such. So if you didn't get out over here, you definitely got to get out over here with the market itself weakening. And then as you can see, uh, stock gap down and, and fell pretty hard. All right, last one, Riot. So Bitcoin stocks have had a great year. They moved up sideways. Riot moved up sideways, moved up again. Um, during this rally here in the beginning of July, Bitcoin itself didn't go anywhere. So a little bit of a kind of a head scratcher that so many of the Bitcoin stocks did extremely well, but Bitcoin itself just kind of sat there. So anyways, this is one that I played. Um, I played it in here a few times. <clears throat> made money but not a lot of money and then I finally and I kept playing it and eventually got lucky I guess you can say because it broke out and uh, and went pretty high so let's zoom in over here on the on the two hour chart uh, and see how to manage this all right so here's the two hour chart what I see here is RSI break support here a little bit of a negative divergence so we got trend line break here negative divergence cross down here Stochastic crosses up there. Now, strong stock doing great. The group is doing great. Everything's fine. The warning comes from the fact that Bitcoin wasn't doing anything, but, you know, something to keep an eye on. But the stock was doing well. You could have very easily said, hey, we got support from the 21 over here, a little bit from the 21 here. I'm not going to just panic and sell it just because I'm getting these sell signals. Let it come down to the 21. Maybe we get some sort of a consolidation pattern before it breaks out again. But let me do that all right so as the stock is finding some support of the 21 here what you what we have here is this the rsi just can't bounce okay it forms support at the center line it kind of channels sideways the macd cannot bounce cannot curl back up so we have a little bit of an up move here but the mac cannot cross back up and the stochastic rotates up and then curls back down so the combination of like this crossing back down this failing to cross back up this flagging sideways and then crossing back up. This to me is a sell signal over here. Okay, that's how I would trade it. And you know, the stock continued to move sideways for several weeks. Eventually broke down. Give you another, give you another chance over here. The stock I think right now is down near 13, 13.5, somewhere around there. So, you know, you could kick yourself. Like I sold too early. I should have given it more time. But to me, it's like the market at this time was starting a weekend and you just like trust your signals okay got to be disciplined to them all right so that's all i have for you kind of a long video so, sorry for that but this is just you know keep keep it simple have a system that gets you in and out um when the market is acting really well i'm not going to say you ignore your sell signals but oftentimes you could give your stocks a little bit of time and space to move around um, use a moving average as a sell signal, but if you get a second set of sell signals when the market is acting very well, then you should just dump it no matter what. But when the market is not acting well, take the first sell signal and live to fight another day. All right, hope you got something out of this. I'll see you next time.